Hey guys, Andy here at Green Energy. Today we'll be testing two EU2200s connected in parallel. Also connected uh, in parallel with our uh, parallel hose extension kit. Connected on a single tank of propane, that is a 30 pound propane tank. And to my left, left here we have uh, three 1500 watt heaters each. So 1500, 1500, 1500. And I'll quick show you how everything is hooked up here. So we have T-splitter here, brackets to keep the demand regulator upright. They need to be mounted upright. Our 10 foot extension hose here to the propane tank with quick disconnect. This uh, can also be connected to your uh, uh, propane uh, outlet uh, right in the back of your travel trailer or RV. Um, most people call it the barbecue port. I uh, call it the propane uh, um, uh, outlet. And we have here a digital watt meter. So we'll be testing max wattage output when on propane. Uh, this is going to be quite, quite interesting. We can see the max output for wattage and amps. So I'll, I'll, a quick note, uh, our hose extension kit with a T-splitter will be available on our website. It'll also be available on our um, product page as well. Excuse me for the noise here. I just went ahead and uh, started up the generator, so they're all warmed up now. Uh, another quick note, when you do purchase our uh, hose extension kit with a T-splitter, you're going to want to um, purge the, the hose first when you start it. So it's going to take a while for you to purge the hose, so essentially have this disconnected and have this valve turned on as shown here and start the first generator um, first. Uh, it's going to take you a couple pulls it's because you're, you're as you're purging the line the line has air in it so obviously the generator is not going to start on air so once you get the hose primed with propane this first generator will start then go ahead and connect your uh, second gen second um, uh, regulator here to this to the quick connect then you can go ahead and start the second generator it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to start it once you get both generators started and the hose purged uh, you shouldn't have trouble starting it again after that, but purging the um, the hose of air is going to be uh, a, bit, uh, a bit of a chore. You're not like you're going to be doing it uh, extensively, but um, just a quick note, customers call like, hey, my generator won't start. It's because you have to purge the hose. So I went ahead, like I said, went ahead and started the generator up, and we're going to see what's the wattage output. So we're going to turn the eco throttle off. So both generators are running great. And again, um, someone asked, why are you just warning heaters for your test? Uh, the heaters just represents the load. So you don't have to use a heater. It's just there to showcase how much load we can put on the generator and see what is the max wattage output. You know, you can, if you like, I don't have a travel trailer at the moment, so I can turn on ovens and, and microwaves and refrigerators and want to test the load that way. But this kind of simulates, uh, these three heaters simulate the load and that's what we need to uh, do on this test. So we're going to turn on the first heater. Excuse me if it's a little noisy. So at the moment we're reading uh, 127 volts, 77 watts. That's most likely due to the voltage drop here in the extension cord. That's quite normal. 60 hertz looking great. Current is at zero because we don't have any load on it and the two other readings we're just going to ignore. So quick no. Uh, when you have load on this generator, you don't want to drop below 100 uh, for the voltage. Excuse me. You, you want to read between 100 to 130 volts. Uh, anything lower than that, um, that's not good. And for hertz, you want it to always be at 60 hertz. If it, if it drops below 60 hertz, that's not great either. So we're going to keep an eye on those two. And that showcases the health of the generator. Uh, as it's being uh, ran on propane and also the engine being loaded up on our three loads here. Uh, generator obviously is going to handle two, two loads because together uh, peak, I would say surge wattage on the two EU2200s 2200, connected together is going to be 4400 watts uh, surge and running uh, wattage will be uh, 3600 running watts. So these two heaters will, will together will be 3,000 watts, and that's going to give us our, our, our uh, 
our final push and um, max load reading to see if it'll handle a third heater. Ideally, you only just want to run to uh, up to 1300 watts. I don't, I'm mean, sorry, excuse me. Uh, you don't want you don't want to go over 3000 watts. Um, but we're just going to turn on the third one and see what happens and see if the overload light comes on and so forth. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and turn on the first first load. So it should read 1500 kilo, uh, 1500 volts. Sorry, 1500 watts. Excuse me. Excuse me today. I've been, been a little oil today. So that's about right. We're going to turn on the second one now. See how much that reads. So with two heaters on, we're reading at 122 volts. 3 kilowatts and 60 hertz it looks pretty stable and 24 amps looking good so far I don't see any overload light nor any overload light on the second one so it looks good generator sounds health, uh, pretty much healthy now we're gonna turn on the third slowly turn it on so all right, 3.56 kilowatts. So as I mentioned, uh, 3,600 watts running is where your maximum should be. So it's pretty much near that at almost three amps. I mean, excuse me, 30 amps. Now we're gonna go full tilt, see what it reads. 119 volts, wow. 4.25 kilowatts, 60 hertz, and 3, 35 amps. That's pretty impressive. Let's, let's see if the overload light goes on. Nope. Not on. So we got three heaters going, reading at 4.14 kilowatts. Voltage looks great, staying well in between range of 100 to 130 volts. 60, uh, 60 hertz and 35 amps. Turn one off. See where it jumps to now. We turn the, the eco throttle on. There's no stuttering as she's powered down here. Sounds very healthy. All right, in summary, we just saw that the max uh, wattage output is uh, 4,000 watts and max amperage is at 35 amps, which is uh, pretty impressive for uh, these two generators converted on propane. You know, I uh, use sometimes you I get customers that call me and they say, well, Google says, you know, my Google search says that you'll lose 20 percent power output when you're on propane and so forth. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to test this out, throw a digital watt meter on and do a, a kind of a, a real life test on it. And as shown on the digital watt meter, numbers don't lie. I don't see any 20 percent drop in power. I saw up to, you know, a little over 4000 watts. And if it was a, a case where it is a 20% drop in power, as the internet says, it would have been, you would have read somewhere around 2,800 watts max, but we saw that it pushed a little over 4,000 watts. It just showcases that if you, you know, if you build a good quality kit or have a good quality kit, you really shouldn't lose any power when you're on propane. And um, today, that's what summarizes today's test is like, I just kind of want to showcase where um, that, you know, Putting this on the load and, and reading the, the max wattage reading on a digital meter really showcase and really kind of cements the fact that, you know, you shouldn't be losing power when you, you have a great kit. And this is what we're, this is, um, this is something that we've done here at Green Energy is we've taken the time to develop a great kit and you shouldn't have to sacrifice power if, when you're not on gasoline. So, all right, guys, if there's any comments, questions, just let me know. Uh, also visit us at greenergy-us.com. Please subscribe to us. We appreciate your support. And if, um, if anything, like I said, just give us a call. Give us a shout out. Thanks.